combat, absolutely not. It's something that you're going to have to give up. But when you're at home... Well, wait, but that's all I'm talking about. It says, it says troops on duty will be allowed to breastfeed Rachel. On duty also is stateside and not just deployed. And there has been so many times where I've been denied breaks, but smokers get breaks, and they've been... Please, please don't read from the, from the... I know what you're doing. You're reading a... Um, a sheet that someone gave you to read. You're part of the, the, the operational class that pushed this in the military. But you're not answering the question that America wants answered, Rachel. How are is a troop on duty going to be able to breastfeed? It's For me, it's more pumping. It's not breastfeeding. But if you have an office job, which there are many... Wait, wait, wait ma'am, I, I didn't... I, we're not saying it's a problem for an office job. Ash Carter has said that he will allow troops on duty to breastfeed. How does that work? Also, whenever you are in a stateside, when you are just working in an office, you have... You're not answering me. How will troops on duty be able to breastfeed? That's all we're asking you, Rachel. If you have a 15-minute break and someone can bring your child to you, you can, you can do it. You mean they're going to bring the children to you on the front lines? No, absolutely not. If you're deployed, you're not going to be able to, to have that. That's, that's not going to happen. That's something you have to give up. Which I've Wait, you, you, mean, you mean you're not going to sue when you're on the front lines and ISIS won't put down their weapons for you to breastfeed? No, and, and I hope that's not what this, this whole purpose is for. I think it's for when you're home and stateside that there should be no reason that you... Wait, you could always sue ISIS for not letting you breastfeed because it's a violation of your rights. No, sir, that's not even close to, close to where, where I'm coming from this or what I see from it. I, I do not concur with someone trying to breastfeed when they're deployed. That's not going to happen. You don't... All right, then you've answered the question. It's not when you're deployed in combat. That's what you're saying. Is that correct? That is what I'm saying. You can All right, so how much is this going to cost the military to build 50 mother's rooms or whatever, 5,000 mother's rooms? He has shrunk the military to levels below that of World War I. He has demoralized the military by firing officers. Don't you think this will further weaken the military? How does it strengthen it? Well, I think it strengthens it because there are very many good soldiers who are also mothers who want to be able to stay in. And sometimes whenever you have to give up that ability to provide for your children something you think is important for that first year, I think you should be able to give them that opportunity. I don't think you need special rooms, but a set room versus, I mean, I've pumped in supply closets and bathrooms, and that's not somewhere you want to pump. If you just have a small room, that's all I need, and I think that's, hopefully that's all that they're getting at. I don't need a big, lavish room with couches or TVs or anything like that. Nothing special, just a room. Hey, sorry, this little office is now specific for breastfeeding and breast pumping. Do you realize what this is going to cost? Do you know what else this moron Ash Carter announced today? 14 days of paid paternity leave for new fathers, 12 weeks of fully paid maternity leave across, across the joint force, new investments in subsidized child care, do you have any idea what this will cost and further weaken the military? It, it will cost a lot, and I don't agree with, with everything, but that's, I mean, I'm not in those positions. Do you know that the military announced today that they're going to provide advanced reproductive technologies like IVF, in vitro fertilization in the military? Do you think that that's the place of a military to, incur, to in, impose this kind of social engineering? I do not. I agree with breastfeeding room. And breast pump. All right, you're a very sweet person, and I take back what I said. You're real. You're not reading a script. You're genuine, and for that, I salute you, and I wish you the best in your military career. Right back on the Savage Nation. Well, here's something that you should have expected. Uh, Obama to make first trip to American Mosque. On Wednesday, the president of the, I guess, the United States of America, will visit the Islamic Society of Baltimore, hmm. a sprawling community center in the city's western suburbs that serves thousands of people with a place of worship, a housing complex, and schools. It is one of the mid-Atlantic region's largest Muslim centers, and it uh, wants to be the anchor of a growing Muslim community, blah, blah, blah. It teaches inclusiveness and tolerance, and it interacts with neighbors in an Islamic exemplary manner. If only that were true. There are those who say that the Islamic Society of Baltimore has ties with organizations that are less than sterling. Now, the question is, why is the president doing this at this time? 
we are at war with ISIS, which is the Islamic State, what would the President of the United States hope to signal by visiting the Islamic Society of Baltimore at a time like this, instead of a Christian society, which is being decimated in the Middle East? You do know there's a genocide going on against Christians in the Middle East, don't you? Wouldn't you think that the goofball in the White House would better serve the Christian community by going to a major Christian organization and saying we stand with Christians in the Middle East and elsewhere who are being killed by Muslims and we ask our Muslim brothers to help us by intervening in the slaughter? Yeah, but that's asking too much, isn't it? That's too logical, isn't it, for this uh, world that we're living in? Brian on KSFO, welcome to the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Well, I'll tell you what's on my mind. I, uh, you, you really kind of changed my vote here a little bit. I, I was on the fence with Cruz and Trump, but you know what? We do need somebody with uh, the big cojones to go in and change this country. And uh, I was listening tonight. What a great show you had tonight. I mean, uh, Trump, uh, you had the African-American guy. And even the uh, girl with the, uh, the breast, I thought it was great. Yeah, no, it's unbelievable. No, when I think about it, if, if I look back, you're right. You're a, key, you're a very keen listener. you got great, great retention. I, Trump was a great interview. Even though it didn't break a lot of new ground, it certainly was very interesting. The African-American man who I just heard him say, I have a, a master's in, uh, in physics. I caught, uh, caught that and a asked him a story. Then the girl who I disagreed with originally, I agreed with her. That was amazing radio. It was an awesome show, uh, but what a great show. Tonight I'm in Vegas, and it's just a great show. Uh, You're in Vegas? <laughs> what, are, what are you doing, having a vacation? Uh, no, I'm a flight attendant, and uh, this is just where I was at this evening. Wow, isn't that amazing? Well, I hope I get you on a flight one of these days. That's a pleasure to hear from you, and I hope you vote with your brains, not with your heart. Clifton on KSFO, San Francisco. Clifton, fire away. Mike, long time listener, my brother. Hey, um, I want to get to my point, and I'd like to expound on something that you mentioned on about Ted Cruz, too. But my main point is that Donald Trump has made or created the atmosphere for more millionaires in the black community than Obama ever will, Okay. And my reasoning behind that is because when Def Jam Records, I don't know if you know anything about hip hop or anything like that, but back oh, I certainly know. I certainly know the label. Trust me, I know how big they are. Yeah, Def Jam Records was about to go under. Guess who they went to go see? Okay, from that point on. Wait, you're saying they went to Donald Trump for for funding? No, I'm not. I I don't know what went on, went, went on in the meeting. But I know that Russell Simmons went to him and, um, you know, had a meeting with him, okay? Wait, wait, he, Russell Simmons went to Donald Trump? Yes. Oh, so you think he was instrumental in getting them funding in, the, in, a, bad, in a bad stage that saved them? Exactly what happened. I'm not telling you nothing that, that's hyperbole or anything like that. No, no, it's very interesting. I didn't know anything about that. You know, you learn, if, you, if you're lucky, you do learn something new from callers. Like I learned about breast pumps in the military today. Cruz, what you mentioned about Ted Cruz and his, his Bible thumping and all of that that he's dealing with and all of that going on with that? Mike, your life should be a living epistle of the Word of God. I shouldn't have to talk to you or anything about how I'm, my relationship with Christ is, okay? I shouldn't have to beat that over your head. You should all right, so, you, so you're saying to me there's something a little yucky about him talking about it on the tr on the campaign trail is that what you're saying job our job is to plant a seed another man gonna come water it and god gonna get the increase do you understand what i'm saying i don't have no you're 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 very good at what you're saying clifton i thank you for calling the show he's referring to the strange strange uh ted cruz thing which we're going to play again where he he does something that is worthy of note listen to clip number one I want to ask of each of you, is that you pray. Oh, come on. That you commit today, every day from now to election day, to lift this country up in prayer. To spend even just one minute a day saying, Father God, please. 
Continue this awakening. Continue this spirit of revival. Awaken the body of Christ that we might pull back from the abyss. Over. Over. Finished. 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 I'm a nut. The guy's a nut. I'm sorry. You don't do this on the campaign trail unless you are so craven and desperate that you think no one notices what a phony you are. That's all. I mean, if Trump did it, I would mock it. I'll be honest with you. It's okay to believe in what you believe in, but this is a, a, a nation that's quite pluralistic. There are other religions, Mr. Cruz. I recognize that you may not respect other religions, but there are other religions that uh, don't see things that way. What, they're not allowed to vote? Only those who accept the body of you-know-who can vote now in, in Iowa? This is crazy. This is getting nuttier by the day, okay? And that's why I say pay very close attention to the candidates and what they're actually saying. Don't just go along with what you think they're saying. I began this show with a comment that I thought is quite interesting and quite insightful. I said there are three Americas that we all carry in our head at the same moment. The America that was, the America that we want it to be, and the America that will be. Uh, listen carefully to what I just said to you. There's three Americas at the same time. Which America does Ted Cruz want to drag us into is the question. Does he even know? I think it's only the America that he is the God Almighty of. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. ask myself, uh, what is Ted Cruz thinking? And he says, to pray, to commit today, every day, to lift this country and pray, awaken the body of Christ that we may pull back from the abyss. I'm sorry, that doesn't seem like it, it doesn't resonate as something you would do on a campaign trail. Now, I imagine Donald would do something like that. He would say, I pray to awaken the body of Melania and pull back from the abyss. That's a joke, okay? I'm trying to lighten it up a bit. And I hope you enjoy my humor. Many of you do, many of you don't. Many Iowans won't even decide until today whom to vote for. Did you know that? A fifth of the Iowans made up their mind. What is it with Iowa? I live in San Francisco, California. I'm a former New Yorker. I left in 1970, I don't know when, 68. I don't know when I left. But the point is, I'm sick and tired about hearing about caucuses. i got to be honest with you. Am I the only one offended by caucuses, the whole caucus system? It goes back to 1820 with Andrew Jackson. I'm sitting here watching a buggy whip political system. A buggy whip political system. To top it off, I read today that Bill Gates' group, Microsoft, is counting the votes, you hear, with a special app. And I'm supposed to sit here and believe a word of it is true? The whole thing is like uh, Capricorn 1 to me. What have they already decided? Oh, let's see. She wins the caucus. Uh, he wins the caucus, and in the election, she wins. Now go home and let Bill Gates run the world. Bill Gates and his mother in Seattle run the world. That's all. Next case. Nothing to see here. Keep moving. Savage Nation, 855-407-282. You want to comment on anything I say? Why? You can't do better than me. But if you care to try, go ahead. You can call the show. I'm giddy now. Now, I'm going to give you a little preview of tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be a madhouse here. A, nut, a, a madhouse. It's going to be a madhouse after the call. Everyone and his mother's uncle is going to call Mike this, Mike that. Did you see what happened? Did you hear what happened? He went up. He went down. He almost won, but it wasn't for that. And there was snow, and then someone came out, and a cow got loose, and the cow knocked over the, the polling thing, and the, the caucus fell over when a steer hit it. If that steer didn't knock it over in Duquesne, in Duluth, it would have happened the other way because it twisted, and a bull got loose. And on top of that, some buffalo came out of the Buffalo Museum, they came back to life with mastodons that were dead in the snow, and that scared people away from the caucus. And because of that, there's no validity. Even though he won, he lost. And the other one, even though he lost, he won. And that's why I say, Mike, that's why I'm calling your show. That's tomorrow. The Pensee Sauvage tomorrow. The Pensee Sauvage, the man for order. Yeah, that's going to be a show I'm going to do one of these days. Is a show called The Savage Mind based upon Claude Levy Strauss and his great seminal anthropological work, Le Pensée Sauvage, A Savage Mind. I'm telling you this for a reason. I was cleaning out a bookcase over the weekend because I'm cleaning up one house and taking a studio apart, and I had all my anthro books pulled out. And one of them that 
I pulled out was called The Savage Mind by Claude Levi-Strauss because it's important to me that you